Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to our second part of our Wife Swap Q&A. Um, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer before this video to say I'm sorry about the visuals again. I tried to film it via a Zoom chat um, so we would have both faces in the shot at all times but I didn't realize that when it recorded it was just going to shoot whoever was talking at any given time. So there's a lot more of me than there is of Janine in this video but again much is the same as the last video. There's not a whole lot to look at anyway. We're really just having a discussion so if you're someone who likes to listen to podcasts, I know I do, then maybe try and listen to it in the same way that you would listen to a podcast or the radio, you know, while you're doing something else, because yeah, like I said, there's nothing really to look at. Um, but I do want to encourage you to listen to it because it's, um, I th feel like it gives a lot of insights into the show. There seemed to be a lot of confusion after the show about the way that sort of I live my life. So we sort of cleared up a lot of that in this part. And if you guys wanted to see more generalized questions slash questions more about Janine's lifestyle, then go and check out part one of the Q&A, which I will make sure to link below. As well as that, I really want to encourage you guys to stick around to the end. Janine and I talk about some really, really important stuff outside of Wife Swap that I feel is very, very important for everybody to know, um, particularly if you live in Australia. So if you were willing to take the time out of your day to listen to that, then I highly recommend. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can jump into the video. Hello. Oh, connecting to audio. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me all right? I can now. Yep. Okay, we're recording, recording on two different things. So hopefully we get this right today. Okay. So just to jump back into things, to give people context, we've already done a part one for this video. And just due to technology failing, which is a common problem, we ended up having to do it in two parts and we're refilming this second part. Luckily, we got all of the joint questions and all of Janine's questions out in part one. So if anyone out there had any questions that they had for Janine, then go and watch that because um, we were fairly thorough with all of the things that we went through regarding the show. So chances are you'll be able to find answers there. And then today we're going to be answering my share of the questions as well as just touching on a few important um, topics towards the end of the video. Um, so the question, first question for me was um, how much of the show was real and how much was scripted or edited? So this was sort of one that um, we both touched on a little bit, I think, in my answers. When creating a show, uh, the production team have to have a storyline in mind before they go into the show. They can't just take a camera in and, and point it anywhere and start filming because there's a lot of time, money, people's jobs invested into creating even one episode that they can't run the risk of just going in and filming willy-nilly and seeing what they get. So they have to have certain... Um, scenarios set up in mind and an idea of how they want the episode to go. The point of Wife Sock that I believe is that you want to take two completely separate people's lives, throw them together, shenanigans ensue because obviously you're going to have two people who are experiencing completely different things for the first time. Um, but then ultimately, hopefully in the end those two people can come together and find that they do have commonalities or they can find a mutual respect for each other's lifestyles and they filmed maybe a hundred hours of, sh of footage each um, in the week week and a half two weeks that we were shooting and out of that they only took an hour's worth of footage so yes it's very true to an extent what you see in the episode but They've just been very picky and choosy about the things that they include. And as a result, there are a lot of really lovely moments that did get not, that weren't included. But, um, you know, ultimately in the end, it showed us having differences, coming together, and then having a mutual respect, which is what happened. You covered it. It has to fit the box, doesn't it? And I think we both touched on that in the last video where we talked about things that we really wished had have been included, yeah. but then couldn't be. And that was just simply because it may not have fit that narrative that they had to fit into such a short time period. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next question is, when was the episode filmed? This is an easy one. It was filmed two years ago. So around yeah, what would have been the time good. that maybe we were having like the table meeting or just wrapping up on filming, I think. I yeah, think it's yeah, like pretty much exactly two years. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, which is very crazy to think because, uh, you know, for us, a lot has changed in that two years. And yeah, and the kids have grown up so much. That was funny for them to watch themselves so young. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think 
um, when I looked at my kids, I'm like, oh, they had such little round baby faces in those yeah, shots and seeing it's crazy. And then seeing your kids even, because I still follow them on Instagram um, and you see them looking just that, just that much, because yours are in their teens and that's when you grow very quickly yeah. as well. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, crazy. Huge. Max is nearly six foot three now and he was just regular height then. <laughs> He's just I mean, huge. I thought he was tall back then because I am five foot two. But, um, yeah, to imagine six boy. foot three, holy moly. Okay, um, next question was, mm -hmm. after your experience on Swap, will you still vlog on the family channel or just focus on your personal channel? If anyone were to go and check out my family channel, I haven't posted anything in probably eight months. And I, prior to going on the show, we lived with my parents building this current home that we're in. So when you saw the show, we'd not long moved in. We were still furnishing, doing all of that business, but we'd lived with my parents and I more or less stopped vlogging altogether when we were in their house because that was their privacy and I wanted to respect that. Um, so we didn't, we didn't do any of the vlogging there. And then the intention was to come back and do, do it, you know, gung ho all again. And during that time on YouTube, there was huge shift for family vloggers. There are a lot of family vloggers doing quite scandalous things and coming out with, yeah, some, some really not good, um, not good examples of family vloggers, that's for sure. And it just, in my mind, really tarnished the idea of a family vlogger. And I did not want to be put in that box at all. It really left a bad taste in my mouth. And I just really struggled to, to get back into the idea of doing it again. I thought, if we're doing this again, we need to do it in a, in, in a way that's different and a way that's going to work for our family in now. Uh, our, our middle child, Archie, was diagnosed with autism, level two. So um, we just wanted to focus on him, settle him into school, um, make sure he was okay before I devoted any of my time to something outside of the kids. So I'll, in short, a lot of my time has been devoted to the kids. I haven't been vlogging a lot. And that's, yeah, w w if we come back to it, I would really love to come back to it because it was a real passion of mine. I just want to make sure it's in the right way and that the kids are going to be supported. We're going to feel like we're not crossing any boundaries in posting. The Jacksons can be the new Leyland brothers. Who are they? Oh, no, now I sound old. Okay, look up Leyland brothers. They used to travel all over the countryside, ask the Leyland brothers. That was their, yeah, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, yeah, and film their family just on the old the old, um, the old video cameras. Yeah. The big yep. ones, yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and sold it to the... To the production companies, I guess. But yeah, it was, it was very, they were, they were pioneers in that, I suppose, but it was very That's cool. Awesome. I'll have to, um, yeah, I'll have to go and check them out and I'll send you a couple of links if you're ever interested in seeing that kind of stuff. There's a few YouTubers who do it and I just think okay. like they do it in a way where they're not, the focus is the focus is the land. The focus is, you know, what they're yeah. doing, what they're seeing and what they're experiencing rather than some family vloggers who have to set up scenar scenarios inside their houses in order to create content. And I just, that's what really bit trashy. well that doesn't sit well with me and while we never did that I just never want to be considered anything like that I sound real judgy now don't I but um, you're, just, you're, just trying to, you're trying to capture real moments not yes. make, yes. make a script yep. yes exactly um and then as for my personal channel I'm just trying to um I, I absolutely wanted the show to come out first I had a lot of anxiety around posting certain things because I didn't want it to contradict anything that came up on the show. Um, a lot of my mindset about life has changed since we came on the show. And in our contracts, there were certain things that we couldn't, you, you can't talk about the show until you go, get on it. So I was just being overly cautious about that. Um, but yeah, now that we, now that it's out and I don't feel like I have this thing sitting on my shoulders anymore, I feel like I can get out and start doing more of that again. So I'm feeling yep. really good about that. Did the producers make you say certain things, i.e. picking up the camera a hundred times a day? <sighs> they used that a lot in the show, <laughs> picking up the yeah. camera a hundred times a day, which I don't think we ever did. But I think when we were doing the preliminary shooting at our house, James just threw a number out there. He, he said, you know, like, you know, if you're a blogger, you could pick up the camera a hundred times a day. And they mustn't have realized that. So they went with it. And then all of a sudden there's, yeah, they vlogged a hundred times a day, which sounds obscene. Um, so yeah, 
they didn't tell us to say that. James said that and it was sort of taken a little bit out of context, unbeknownst to the people who were, um, un un unbeknownst to the producers. Um, but I don't think they've ever put words in our mouths. They certainly would chat to you about certain topics to get your opinions on very specific topics or ideas on the show. But um, I don't, I don't feel, feel like there were ever words put in my mouth, did you, Janine? Certainly steered in a certain direction. Um, when, you, when you said what they wanted you to say, it was funny, you just had to you just say, well, can you, can you say that question back to us and then answer it? Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't think words were put in my mouth. But we were the ship was steered in a certain direction. Yeah, and I think Which again, that, yeah, 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 it goes back to exactly what we were talking about, doesn't it? They, they, that's the story that needs to be told, and it was yeah, fairly yeah. a fairly accurate story of what our experiences yeah. were like, just very, very condensed, but it quite was, intense too. So sometimes I think my reaction wasn't. If I had had an opportunity to stop and think about what I was going to say before I was like, right, what do you think right now with a camera there, I probably would have answered it slightly different. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you do react differently with that pressure of the cameras because it's not a normal situation. Of course. And I think you've said to me the other day, like, you know, you are in a completely different environment. Like, you weren't sleeping well because you're in Queensland and Queensland is art. It is very hard to sleep in Queensland when you're not used to the humidity. You're very tired. It's very emotional. You're missing your family. So you can say okay. things in the moment which you go back and think, oh, oh, I could have said that in a different way. But yeah. that's that's just part of it. That's part of the experience, yeah. isn't it? Please explain the dance thing because you have come off as incredibly pushy parents forcing a child to do hours and hours of dance that she doesn't want to do, i.e. Heidi looked like she hated it. I didn't hate it. I was sitting in a car in traffic with a strange woman for two hours and went, what about my mom? <laughs> That's the bit she hated, I think. Probably, probably. And, yeah, Heidi is very much, I mean, I don't, like, she wasn't giving any signs what I saw on the TV of hating something. Like, it's not like she was crying. It's not like she was stomping and being like, oh, I hate this. Um, yeah. She, yeah, she certainly didn't have a huge smile on her face, but... Heidi is the kind of person that doesn't to show too much emotion. She's not a very expressive person. She holds a lot in. Um, and that can often be a challenge for me as a mum because I really do have to have a lot of really big conversations with her to see exactly how she's feeling about a certain topic. When she was on the show, you know, it was, she was sort of maybe tired or I'm, I'm not sure because I wasn't there. Um, but definitely when we came out of it, she said, I, I said to her, look, would you like to do something else? Would you like to try basketball? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, it would probably be wise to cut back on dancing if you are doing basketball as well, because there's only certain, so much time you have in the day. I don't want you to be overworked. Um, so let's look at dancing. What's, what classes do we want to cut back? So we started going through ballet, tap, jazz. And every single one, she was like, oh, no, 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 I can't quit that one. Oh, no, no, I can't quit that one. So I don't, I don't know if she put a whole lot of thought into it. She was a little bit embarrassed when the show came out because she was worried that people at her dance school would think she didn't love them anymore or that she wasn't happy. And she was a bit nervous about that. But the school was amazing. So um, just to let everyone know, it's very play-based. We're not child abusers. <laughs> like, she is happy. Trust me. Okay, so... My question was, what is the reason behind you wanting to put your life and your children's births, precious childhood moments, et cetera, obviously without their consent on a YouTube channel for millions of people that you don't know to view? Great question. When I started YouTube, I was 19 years old and pregnant, unexpectedly, um, shock horror there. And I didn't know anybody really who was in that space. And so I started creating these video diaries and putting them out there to sort of connect with other people who might have been out there all over the world who might have been sharing the same experiences you know share my experiences and get the advice from others and that was certainly what I did we built a little community and some of the people who followed me back then I'm actually friends with now and they've followed me all these years and I've still got a connection to those people which is really nice Back then, I didn't really consider, I didn't really know what family vloggers were or anything like that. It was just me putting my life out there and I didn't even make money. I didn't even know you could make money from it. 
um, once Heidi was born, there were a lot of people who did follow me who sort of had said, oh, like, you know, they wanted to see updates, what my life was like now as a mother and how I was transitioning. And so I shared that journey as well, because it was quite unique in that, you know, I was still studying, I was helping plan a wedding, I was, James was working and, um, you know, we were just doing a lot of different things and it was not in the typical, you know, go to uni, meet somebody, get married, buy a house, then have a child. So yeah, that's why we continued with it. And um, it just sort of steamrolled from there in a sense. Uh, a lot of people started asking me to share my tips on like home decorating and that kind of stuff. And that's why I created the second channel. And that's the one that took off. So yeah, it was a, a, it was a very accidental thing, to be honest. I didn't, I, I just fell into it literally. And um yeah, that's, I, I guess that's really all to say I, about it. I think that we discussed the other day on the video that didn't work. Yeah. Um, you make every decision for your children without their consent because that's your role as their parent or guardian. Yeah. You just have to, whether yeah. it's vlogging or it's which school they're going to go to or what sport they play, you need to make that decision. So yeah. you you did. Yeah. So yeah. I, don't think, I don't think you should have to call, hold yourself accountable that you chose vlogging yeah. or that you made the decision. That's just what you do. Yeah. 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 I actually and do I think remember, you're, sorry your videos are very kind compared you know there there is some ones that aren't really yeah. view worthy um, yeah. and yours are lovely so oh, thank you that's very kind I mean yeah I, I do I do agree um but then I am also trying to be mindful I think I did mention the other day you just jogged my memory we were talking about kids digital footprints and I you know that's something I've only become aware of in the last year or so that you know, every time you post, even if you're someone who just puts a happy birthday message up for their child on Instagram, that now means that your child's birthday is on Instagram. And by the time a child is old enough to make decisions for themselves, i.e. 18, um, their digital footprint is how much information of theirs is, is online. And, you know, unknowingly, I've put a fair bit out there, really, and they haven't had a choice in that. And they may get to 18 and be like, I wish that wasn't out there and um, that's a bridge that we're going to have to cross when I get to it because at the time it wasn't something I really considered and if it's something that they're really upset about then yeah I'm definitely going to have to to navigate that with them um, for the moment they're quite happy they think that the whole YouTube thing is really really cool so they enjoy it um, right. yeah and, and they're happy and as a parent I think mm -hmm. my job is to just yeah make sure that what I'm putting out there is safe and that they're going to be protected and that's my first priority I guess. Ash did you implement any of the changes that were made with your family like gardening growing veggies etc? Yes I did. Um, I think in the last video I talked about how after the show I got quite sick and that's when my perspectives really changed about what I wanted to be doing with the kids and how I wanted to be spending my time. Something that I thought about when I was on my morning walk this morning is in that time, I actually changed a lot of the things that I ate too. And this relates back to a lot of stuff that you're passionate about, Janine, about, you know, um, food additives and how the kinds of fruits and vegetables you're purchasing and meat and um, how that affected my body. Because when I came out of this sickness, I had to be very careful about the things that I ate throughout being at home in coronavirus and everything like that, it was really, really nice to be able to look back on the experiences that I had at Janine's house and take some of those things that I had learned and implement them with my family and create really nice memories with them. Um, we do still have the gardens at the backyard and cooking with fresh herbs is just, it makes all the difference. And we've kept up with those. We do have guinea pigs that we um, were lovingly given by Janine. And the kids are obsessed with them. They really are. <laughs> guinea pigs were never my thing. I never wanted to be a guinea pig mum. But um, my kids love them. And it makes them happy. And it teaches them responsibility. And it gets them outside. And they create like these big guinea pig obstacle courses and things like that. So it's nice in the end. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, there is a lot that I took away from my experience. And as I said in the last video, and as Janine said before, we wouldn't change it. The next question is, what was your reasoning behind altering, altering the dad's appearance? Was that planned by producers? Uh, we so did discuss that. We did discuss that in the last video. And did I talk about um, 
the conversation that I'd had with Gavin the car in the last video. Yeah, the, they, yeah. they recorded it, but they didn't use it. Yeah, you did. Okay. So, yeah, we, we did already touch on that. And, um, yeah, it wasn't me. I guess that's all we can no, say. No, no, that was, so for people who didn't see the last video, that was, I, I, I would love to have seen Gavin without that beard. So that was a request of mine. And, um, and now we've all seen him without the beard and the beard is back. Yeah. Just so we can confirm the beard is that he never shaved again. Yeah. And I don't think he ever will again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the hair, he just wanted to colour his hair to see, you know, to reminisce on youthful days. Yeah. Yep. Which was nice. I loved that. I loved that part of the storyline. I think I said last time, if one thing could be included, I just wish it was that because it gave so much more of an insight into Gav, you know, about him being more than just the guy in the hat on the farm, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, well, but um, at least we can talk about it here and we have that platform to be able to talk about it and share that other side of the story. So this has been really lovely to be able to do these videos with you, Janine, and to catch up on all of these times and remedies. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity because it's certainly not something I would have ever known how to do. Nice. And I think that's probably, I think that with all the wives, all the families really on the, there's so much we don't see. Yeah. Um, there's so much more to the other stories because you always get that bit of um, angst between the families. And at the end, everyone gets along and you think mm, there was really something missing in the middle. You know, when when everyone got to know it after you spent that week in someone else's home and really almost become part of the family, yes. you, you click. Don't you? You yeah. get compassion yeah. for their lifestyle and you get yeah. an understanding of, okay, that's not how I did it, but now I get why you do that that way. Yeah. And that's yeah. what meshes it all together. And, and the audience never gets to see that. The, yeah. The good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really the beauty of the show in the end, isn't it? And I remember specifically them telling me this where before we went into show that this is what was going to happen, that they were going to say, look, you're going to go away. You're going to find it quite hard. You're going to learn new things. You're going to come out of it and you're going to love it. And you're going to be all the more you know better for it and um yeah. yeah that's exactly what happens all right so while we um are just sort of a little bit on the topic of talking about you know our different lifestyles and all of that jazz um we had mentioned about wanting to share information about farming um for those who don't know which look, I'm still very much in that boat of not really knowing a whole lot. And so I'm now trying to educate myself a little bit more. I think that was one of the things that I didn't consider before I went on the show and was one of my biggest takeaways and my biggest aha moments that Gav had said to me that one night, most people know who their doctor is, but who do you know who your farmer is? And I thought, well, no, I just buy it from a, from a grocery chain. That's what's convenient. And you don't think, well, how is, how is that meat that you're buying? Like, how is that slaughtered? How is that prepared? And we're in an age where people are becoming increasingly aware of what we put in our bodies. But I think there's sort of a gap there when it comes to where we're getting our fresh produce from. So 70% want- of the Australian population lives east of the Great Dividing Range. So okay. that means a bulk of our population. So there's... Um, so all the people who, we're not going to say all, so the, the majority of people are doing the purchasing, the food comes from the other side of the mountains, but yeah. they don't necessarily understand where or why or how that gets to them. And I do think it's really important. You need that connection. Yeah, absolutely. It's too easy to get something out of a packet. And that's it's not food, is it? You know, you need to be recognisable. Even if they use... Yeah, if they use chemicals, they're doing it, they're, they're running their farm well. They're doing yeah. good animal welfare practices and yeah. good management techniques. Yeah. yeah, it can be, you don't have to be organic to farm well, but mm-hmm. it's good to support farmers who are doing a really great job and there's loads of them out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, we also talked about putting some more information. I think it was Charlie Arnott. Yep, uh, a local farmer to me who is doing great work promoting sustainable agriculture. Mm-hmm. And just care for the environment first. Healthy yeah. soil, healthy plants, then healthy livestock in that order. Not, yeah, and I, I think that's the kind of farmers we need to look for. Yeah, I mean, you'd shared his podcast with me sort of a week and a half ago, and I've listened to a few of his podcasts since then. And even though I'm not in that world, uh, so I did have to pause it a lot and, you know, go and look up certain terms and everything so I could really understand what he was talking about it was relatively easy to follow and it really um, 
made me consider a lot of things as well. So I found that very, very interesting. And I do encourage other people to go and check that out because, yeah, it was very, very cool. And I think you'd mentioned we'd, we'll maybe try and do another video with Charlie on it if possible. Um, yeah. Yep. yeah, I've had a chat with him. He's, he's happy to. And he's got a lot of good um, agricultural charities that yep. he can give our direction to. Wonderful. That'd be really good. We need the support of, of all Australians and everybody needs to give back and everybody needs to be super aware of what our farmers are dealing with at the moment. My cousin, uh, who's just my age, she runs a banana farm with her partner. And just recently we had some storms in North Queensland, which look, North Queenslanders are very, very used to cyclones, cyclone season, but this was not technically a cyclone. So it sort of came a little bit um, out of the blue. And more than 60% of her, their trees have been wiped out. So that's mm -hmm. now, yeah. And so they're having to lay off over half their stuff on top of which it's, it's going to take nine months for those trees to be able to, to come back and start being able to bear fruit again. So I'll share a link to a video down below that can give further information about that. And that's, it's just common, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. There's so many just, we had to completely destock Nearly, we kept our, our dairy cows, our three dairy cows, um, but we sold the bull, all our other cattle, all our crossbred sheep because of the drought, because we were spending in excess of $1,000 a week on hay, and that's not sustainable. And that wasn't sustaining our farm. That was damaging the soil. And so we sold our stock and, and we weren't the only ones. So lots of uh, families through New South Wales and Queensland completely destocked. So like you say, you know, you, you get rid of 60, 70, 80% of your production, you have to put off staff. And then when times are good, you've got to try and rebuild. But that that um, recovery time is, is slow. So now we've got grass everywhere and no animals eating it. Yeah, wow. It's, it's really nice to see the grass growing again. And that's the priority at the moment to, to build that soil health again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you guys would have been very hit. Sorry, I just the bushfires, you know, everyone. Yeah, yeah. those fires fun. were devastating, and like absolutely, no words. And we get so much of it in Australia, and I don't, I don't know how farmers do it because the culture that I've grown up in, you know, there's a lot of good things, but then people do tend to feel very sorry for themselves when when they fall on hard times. I was watching this video last night that my cousin shared, and her farm was included in this, and the way that the farmers were talking is very much like oh, it happens. And I'm like, you've just lost your livelihood. And you're like, okay, we're just going to pick it up and we're just going to keep moving forward. That's that Aussie battler mentality. Yeah. And it's Resilient so incredible. It's, it's incredible. But then as well, there's, um, from what I understand, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's been a lot of issues with the mental health of farmers as well in the last couple of years or that I'm aware of in the last couple of years as well because it's it seems to be very much like, a you know, you get knocked down and you get back up again, but there's no real time to, to process what's happening because you just have to get up and keep going again. Yeah, and, the, and because I, I think... I think the, the loneliness aspect, um, it's difficult for people to reach out when they literally don't have that population around them. Rural suicide is a massive issue, massive, much higher than in the cities. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, eight, what do we lose? Eight Australians a, a week to suicide? It's, it's an astronomical number. And yeah. it's not something we talk about enough. When you're on this side, you're not in that rural community, you don't sort of take the time to stop and realise just how important farming is. Someone's got to grow the food. We will share some links down below, won't we? We've got, um, I've got that video link. I've got a couple of charities that I'm going to link below. We've got um, Landcare Australia, which has a lot of information on that website, as well as a link to donate. I'm also going to yep. put the, I think it's called the Australian Banana Growers Council. I'm going to put that down below right. because there's a lot of information on there as well because um, our banana farms, they're suffering at the moment. Oh, on top of the fact, I just wanted to quickly mention that fruit pickers, we don't have fruit pickers at the moment because they're the people who come from overseas and we haven't opened up our borders yet. So yeah. they're struggling. There's lots of help. Well. There's no help. If anyone's unemployed, go on, go on contact yeah. a fruit farm and we'll give you a job tomorrow. And then um, you had a few other links, Janine, that I will grab from you and we can pop down below as well. Yep, will do. I'll send those through to you.
All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting me again today, Janine. I know um, you have a busy schedule at the moment, so I appreciate it quite a bit. Yep. Oh, no, I enjoyed it. Really, yeah. you've, you've well, I wouldn't say you're converting me, Ash, but um, you're putting the goodness in the online part. <laughs> I love it. And like genuinely, when I look at your Instagram and even before this whole wife swap thing the information you put out there is so so valuable and I just feel like you know if you're happy to put yourself out there and to share your knowledge because you are a very intelligent person you don't you you have a master's in agriculture don't you oh not quite but I, I am qualified in agriculture yeah okay because I remember um, coming in your house and seeing the certificates on the wall and being like wow this yeah. lady is smart and I didn't know that you had a that you had a proper career in YouTubing, and you had your certificate on the wall. Like, oh, ah. that's, that is not only it's a thing; that's a proper thing. That's a proper yeah. job. Yeah, so, yeah. We, we learned a lot about each other. Um, I've always been. I'm very passionate about agriculture, and I could talk about it all day and really bore people with it. <laughs> but I love it, and I, I just wish. I, I just want people to, you know, you don't have to go and be a farmer. You don't have to grow your own veg if you don't want to, but it's good for your health. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. So, um, you know, be aware of nutrition and understand where your food comes from. And if you can support the people who produce your food, you know, do it. Buy Australian is the best yeah. thing you can do. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. And for anyone who's watching, I want to thank you guys for watching all of this. It's been really, really great for us to be able to share the other side of the story when it came to Swap. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link down to that below as well. Um, and if you if you actually want to see it, you don't have to. Um, and if you want to see more of these videos with Janine and I and sharing Janine's knowledge, then please let me know in the comments because, um, you know, that's what drives these kinds of videos. And I'm also going to put a link down to Janine's Instagram. If you're okay with that, Janine? Yep, yep, that's fine. I'm going to put a link down to that below and I highly suggest you guys go and um, have a look at the things that Janine's posting because it's it's very valuable and it will change your perspectives for the better. Thanks for that, Ash. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And I will catch you later. All right. See you. Right. Say hi to you. Bye. Will do. Yours Bye. too. Bye. Bye.